Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay for the in-stream currency struts which they earn by watching. I haven't posted an episode in quite a long time and that's partly because the Twitch live streams have actually concluded. Uh, we actually brought everybody back. There is a conclusion to this series that would be in 10 to 12 episodes. It's just a matter of editing the huge live streams and that was another part of the problem. So I hope to get all those edited and to bring this Solar System Tourism series to a conclusion. What we have here is the launch of NB Silence and Aprop to the moon in the Goku Lunar Lander. This is a direct to the moon lunar lander. It is launching on an SLS core boosted by two Orion carrier planes. And so obviously not the normal SRBs for SLS, but otherwise the EUS on top and then the Goku lander. There is a small extra stage in the fairing there to help the Goku lander capture into orbit. But the Goku lander is designed to land on the moon and then return directly to Earth. You saw the two Orion carrier planes reserve fuel to return safely to some landing site, but I don't think there was a landing site on this trajectory for them to land at safely. Uh, so that was just for show. Uh, they were not in a recoverable situation, I don't think. The core stopped short of orbit, and then the EUS completed orbit, and then boosted us over to the moon. And there you see the lunar burn. And it was just shy of that, so the little stage that I've got tucked into the fairing will complete this burn and then get us into orbit around the moon. However, uh, well, I accidentally put it on the wrong node on the procedural fairing. Uh, so MV Sons, who is an engineer, had to get out and explode all the parts. Uh, so those were all disassembled to clear them off. And then... Of course, MV Science can get back in. This is a pass-through system cabin, the Goku cabin. So, MV Science goes directly to his seat. Don't disassemble the seat. That would cause many problems. So, board command chair. There are all command chairs in there. And then this stage can continue. So, it did the completion of the burn, a mid-course adjustment, and the capture burn as you see here. And also had a little bit of extra Delta V to spare to start us off on our descent. We were trying to land at the site of our ISRU landers. No particular reason. This should have enough propellant. And actually you can drill for methane and oxygen on the moon anyway. And our landers don't allow for that. So it was just because it was a base that we had. And it was interesting to land at it. So the stage started us off on our descent. And it separates off there. And then the Goku lander had to finish the landing. However, I had some problems with it. And what we see here is it deviates a lot from retrograde. Or in its orientation, prograde. And I had trouble controlling it. And the net result was that I was unable to slow down enough. And we approached the ground very fast. I mean, it seems pointed in the right direction right now. So I'm, I don't remember exactly what the issue was, but it didn't go well, <laughs> is the point. Uh, it did not go well, and I, I think it kept uh, tilting up like this. We should be uh, tilting down for sure, but it kept tilting up like this, and that is not what we wanted to do. Now, fortunately for MB Silence and Aprop, uh, we managed to litho break, and that is what you see here. So they did not immediately perish as they probably should have. But this was not the end of their problems because the tumbling doesn't really stop. And you can see it keeps doing this sort of breakdancing thing and there was no way to stop it. I tried to hack gravity at a suggestion from the audience. I increased the gravity. But that really didn't work, even getting it to Earth gravity didn't stop it or even slow down the rotation. And then I decreased gravity in the hope that the RCS ports would be able to do more. And I don't think that would work that way, but you never know. Even though I had persistent rotation, somebody I think suggested saving and loading again, or maybe I thought of that. Probably the audience thought of that. And that seemed to work. You can see it's slowing down here but not really stopping. But it's slow enough that I can go to the Space Center, right? When it was rotating faster, I couldn't go to the Space Center at all. 
but that was enough so that I could go to the Space Center and going to the Space Center and coming back through the tracking station allowed it to settle down. So, okay, now they're here and we could potentially get them out, so we need to send another lander to rescue them. And this time I went with my Lynx capsule and decided to use the lander stage that was designed for Lynx, but we have the capsule as a direct return capsule, so it has the heat shield and the heat shielding on the side. Instead of just the Lynx cabin, which would be how it normally lands on the moon, uh, we have the whole nine yards so that it can come directly back as the Goku would have, so we don't have to send a different orbital spacecraft. Um, I accidentally had an engine on in the fairing, that's why we've got an overheating there and I need to shut that off. That's the, basically the same engine that we had helping us capture into orbit the last time. And this is the, otherwise the same setup, the SLS core, the Orion carrier plane boosters. Now the Lynx system is methane and oxygen and we're using two ED7 engines, but the Goku is designed to do basically this, was launched on the same launcher, but was especially designed for the purpose. The Lynx isn't really designed to do this particular job, uh, going straight to the moon and coming back. So the Delta V is actually tighter with this than it would have been for the Goku. And we're gonna see how that works out. So the launch escape system was jettisoned and the core... Unfortunately, I accidentally brought it all the way to orbit. I was meaning to, of course, complete orbit with the EUS, but I did not do that. And something about the way I decouple often causes the inner stage to explode like that. It's not meant like that. The SLS mod is by Sobel and it separates properly. It's just that sometimes I think I put it on the wrong node and that's why it does that. I forget what, what the exact problem is. If I remember what the exact problem was, I would avoid it, but it tends to have that problem. Anyway, uh, we complete the transfer to the moon with the EUS and we separate. You can see the payload sneaking away from the rest of the EUS there and then uh, fine-tune our approach to the moon with the spacecraft and there's the additional stage at the bottom of the Lynx lander helping us out with our descent. It does a lot more work than it did with the previous spacecraft with the Goku. And that's just because of the balance of the fuels. The Lynx lander is much smaller than the Goku is. The Goku has much more internal fuel. We do have to make a precise landing this time and so I've got landing guidance out trying to tell me the target difference. That's just a reference, it's not controlling the spacecraft. Uh, so I'm using that as reference. However, somehow I got it wrong. And we actually managed to undershoot. And so I separate the stage off. And we need to actually flip around towards the target, burn towards the target because we're falling short here. And so you'll see me do that with the Lynx lander. But because the Delta V is so tight, I decided that we wouldn't get too close to the lander. We need to get ideally within render range. That would be enough for the Kerbals to get out of the Goku lander and get over to this one. But also it would allow simple logistics to work so that we can transfer the methane and oxygen from the Goku lander into this one so that I could definitely have enough Delta V to come back. Uh, we need about 2000 meters per second to get into orbit around the moon and then after that 800 to return to Earth. So right now uh, as we touch down here and we are within render range, that's 2.25 kilometers, uh, we do have enough to get into orbit around the moon again so we could have some other rescue vessel save us but we don't have enough to get back to Earth directly. But if we can transfer the fuel from this Goku lander which Envy Silence is now getting out of, backing out of like that. And if we can get the fuel from here over into the Lynx lander using simple logistics, then we can make the trip home directly. So anyway, Envy Silence scoots on over there. But I definitely didn't want to sacrifice our ability to actually get back into orbit around the moon by getting closer to the Goku lander. So I decided to play it safe in that respect, at least we were preserving the ability to get back into orbit. All right, so MB Silence is in. Both of these, of course, uh, pass through system. Because of the weird way I had to modify the Lynx spacecraft, you see the lines of the tiles near the hatch are distorted. I should fix that sometime. Anyway, uh, Aprop seemed to have extra trouble getting out of the Goku. <laughs> Maybe because he kept flipping around and around all the time, but 
Anyway, ultimately a prop made his way over to the new lander. And the hatch is made for human size, it's just that humans wouldn't go in like standing up, right? They'd go, you know, head first or feet first or something like that. Uh, and the Kerbal heads are really big, so anyway, it is human size. But there we go, I, uh, I don't know how exactly it transferred the fuel, I plugged things together and somehow it ended up refueled over here. So it worked out anyway, we, we managed to get the fuel over here somehow, but I thought I would have to actually do some sort of manual transfer or it would like balance the two equally, but actually top this one off from the Goku lander. So, all right, maybe it was a fuel priority thing. And we did let Envy Sans plant a flag actually. Uh, we sort of, in the heat of the moment, did not think about that with the Goku tumbling and the need to rescue them, but now Envy Sans planted a flag. And I I don't remember whether Envy Sans actually requested to plant a flag or not. It could have been from a previous stream and then, uh, because this was the next stream after we sent the rescue lander. Uh, so that's why we said here in spirit, Envy Sans either wasn't present to request the flag planting or wasn't present to tell me what he wanted to say. Uh, so anyway, we closed the hatch and then we were off. All right, so, so far so good. We do have enough Delta V to get back home. With 2,600 meters per second, by the way, it would have been theoretically possible, like on some Delta V maps, they would have said it would be possible, but it'd be pretty dodgy. You talk about the orbital velocity is 1,667 you see here, and we would only have 1,800 in order to get into orbit. Normally the transfer back from low lunar orbit to Earth is 800, so uh, in theory you could do it with 2,600 altogether but it'd be really tight. Here we actually took extra, and I don't remember why, we took close to a thousand meters per second to get back home, and then I flubbed. I time warped too much, and so we ended up in the atmosphere before we could get rid of the lander stage, and now it's sort of stuck to us, and I managed to get to disintegrate, but we are now pointing nose first into the atmosphere. Technically, the Lynx is covered in heat tiles, and that is by necessity because of the RCS port sticking out as well. The docking port in front is not configured by me, and it explodes. <laughs> so, yep. Uh, and the capsule itself gets really, really close to getting destroyed with the heat. You can see the overheat indicator. The little RCS port icon is the capsule because the RCS ports are built into the capsule. And yeah, it gets really dodgy there. When we turn, it sometimes diminishes, but most of the time it's creeping up there. But somehow it manages to survive. Envy Silence and Aprop have the greatest luck in surviving my, my failures, apparently. Uh, first the tumble on the moon, and now this. So yep. It all works out in the end for Envy Silence and Aprop. And here we are through the worst of it. But there is another catch. The arrow cap you see is pointing in the wrong direction now too. So when we release it, which we have to do in order to get the parachutes to deploy, it does have a collider on it and it will read potentially like they're shielded or something. Uh, when we release it, it's going to come right back at us, and that was a bit of a dodgy moment, right? We, we would like to be the other way around so that when it releases, it just goes away. But anyway, they splash down and everything is all right, despite all the problems. And so that was a very exciting mission to land on the moon for Envy Silence and Aprop. Uh, and Envy Silence, when we sort by ribbons, I am using Final Frontier here for their benefit, uh, does have the most ribbons. And there will be a competition for ribbons. Pekka in particular really wanted to get to the top on the ribbons. And we can see quite a lot of different tourists manage to accumulate ribbons. There are some generic kerbals in the mix there. Bill is not a tourist, for instance. Uh, but there are a lot of tourists in that list as we scroll down. 
And as I peruse that record of our exploits, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.